Hello everyone, let us continue our discussion on vectors. This is vectors part 3. Let's get started. The first topic that we're going to be touching today is linear combination of vectors. So in linear combination what we are saying is let's say we have a vector v5 and if I can break down the representation of vector as v1 plus v2. So what I'm saying is v5 equals linear sum of vector v1 plus vector v2. And let's suppose vector v2 was a linear combination of some scalar multiplied with another vector, let's say v, v6. So I could replace v2 as v5 equals vector v1 plus c multiplied by vector v6, right? So you're multiplying a scalar with a vector and then adding the vectors together. So this is the linear combination of vectors because you're linearly adding the vectors together to give a final resultant vector in the same vector space. The next topic is vector equations. Now we've already seen, oops, sorry about that. Now we've already seen a representation of matrices, um, representation of linear equations in the form of matrix, right? It is also possible to represent linear equations in the form of vector equations and that's what we're going to be seeing. Let's suppose we have three equations here, x, y, x minus y equals 8, 2x minus 2y equals 16 and we have cx, 6x sorry, minus y equals 3. So we have these three equations here. To write them in the form of matrix, this is what we do. If we don't have any coefficient, it's 1. So 1, 2, 6 goes in 1 and you take out the x plus y, you take it off and then you have minus 1, minus 2, minus 1. This equals 8, 16 and 3. So this is the way of representing linear equations in the form of vector equations. When we are representing this them in this form, what exactly we are trying to say is that you multiply this vector with a scalar and then you multiply this vector with another scalar and when you add them together you should actually get this value back. This is what we're trying to say here all right that you're multiplying this vector with a scalar and then you're doing the same here and adding it together this value should come back. Quick recap we've seen linear systems of linear systems we've seen we can represent them in the form of equations. Uh, we've also seen we can represent them in the form of augmented matrix in the matrix video session. In case if you've missed that, I'll link the URL in the description box. The third representation is in the form of vectors which we just saw in the previous slide and again for a quick recap, I have represented them here that you take the scalar values out and then the vector values are here. And then that's how you get back your original vector. So we've seen this representation as well. Linear span. So linear span or span of vectors is a linear space formed by all the vectors that can be written as linear combinations of the vectors in a given set. So for instance, I have this vector 3, 4, 3 and I have two other vectors 1, 1, 1 and 1, 2, 1. Now I can represent 3, 4, 3 as a vector which is 2 multiplied with 1, 1, 1 plus 1 multiplied with 1, 2, 1, right? And so I can say 3, 4, 3 spans in two vectors, which is 1, 1, 1 and 1, 2, 1, with the scalar multiples of 2 and 1 respectively, correct? So this is called as a linear span or linear spanning of vectors. That is, you're writing a vector or a vector is actually broken down into sub-vectors and they are multiplied scalar values and add it together to give us the original vector back all right now let us take another example here so we're trying to generate a vector 3 4 5 and we have two vectors 1 1 1 and 1 2 1 now if you'll see that uh, we have two scalar values here a and b and you're supposed to try doing that on paper and pen but for no values of a and b you will actually be able to get this value of vector back and so we can say that 3 4 3 4 5 does not span in these two vector spaces because no matter what value of a and b you take you won't be able to get this vector back because a and b doesn't have any solution right so we say that 3 4 5 does not span in these vector 
spaces. Some important condition for linear span we've already seen that um, when you're linearly combining them there has to be a b and that b has to be a solution to that linear spanning of the equation because if it is not then that means you don't have any vector which when combined with all of the resultant vectors giving you the original vector back so b has to be a solution for linear span condition to be satisfied all right now for linear spanning we've seen that the linear combination of vectors needs to be consistent and to be consistent there there has to be just three conditions or three things that you can keep in mind or there are three ways to say that a vector b is in span of v1 v2 until vk that's one way of saying it the vector equation has a solution we've already seen this definition in the prior slide and then the linear system with aug augmented matrix is consistent this is the third way of saying the same thing all right we will see this third representation in the next successive slides we haven't discussed them yet so now we've seen matrix equation ax equals b if you've been tracking my matrix videos you must be knowing how important this equation is um, if not then feel free to go and check that out and i will link the url in the description box as well and yeah so now matrix equation ax equals b i can represent them in the form of a vector equation and this is how i do it a becomes my vector matrix and x becomes my scalar matrix and then when you multiply them you get a linear combination of the matrix what we discussed in our first slide all right just keep this notation in mind let's take a quick example here so these are my vectors this is v1 vector this is v2 vector and this is v3 vector so as per that representation what i do 4 7 is multiplied with 1 plus 2 is multiplied with v2 and 3 is multiplied with the third vector so this is the vector representation of the matrix in this case and we've discussed linear spanning here where we say that when you combine the vectors together in some proportion that is you multiply a vector with a scalar and then add them together you should get back the vector if you're not getting the vector back that means it doesn't have a solution and so the vector is not spanning we've also seen three representations of linear systems now first in the form of linear equation second in the form of augmented matrix and third in the form of vector equations we've also seen how we can represent ax equals b which was a matrix equation in the form of a vector equation and we've also taken an example just for our understanding purpose right so this is pretty much it for this session i hope it made sense uh, we've been discussing different ways of representing linear systems of equations and these are all important representations because at the end of the day these are different data structures in itself and when you are doing programming or you're learning artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms you will need to know all these representations i mean they expect you to understand these underlying representations all right the programming stacks and the framework stacks so that is why we are discussing them and these tools will become more useful when we are discussing further sessions down the line so i hope all this made sense and in case if you have any questions you can get in touch to me through the website or feel free to drop in comments and yeah we're going to be discussing vectors part four in the next session thank you so much